Oh, Russell, what have you got behind your back? <laughs> Has Christmas come early? New lens day! Oh, look at the size of that. Because originally we were going to get Z bodies to get smaller and nicer lenses, but we keep on saying that I keep on getting bigger and heavier ones. And now the 50 1.2. Yeah. <laughs> oh my you God. weren't going to get that. And then I sent, I was you, determined I not sent to get you a this. link to something. <laughs> Okay, that led me. I, I then went on to Wex, the site we always, the shop we always use for our camera stuff. Yeah. And what popped up as soon as I clicked on it? A sh a Google display, was listening to you. X Display 51.2. Yeah. Now I've never seen a 51.2 on their used list anyway. But for one thousand eight hundred pounds, and the retail price, recommended retail price, is two thousand four hundred pounds. Wow. Really? Yeah. So you got twenty five percent off? Yes. Wow. The stars lined up. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't deny the opportunity. Couldn't resist it. Oh, yeah, Obviously. here we go. See what oh, you... Sorry. It is quite... It, it is chunky. It is it's chunky. Heavy. I think it is heavier than a 24 to 70, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Even though it looks about the same... Size, yeah. Yeah, it is. And interesting, I put... Test your muscles on your wedding day. When you, you put it out, you want to use it in the evening when you're oh, knackered wow. anyway. Well, I've actually put... This is the lens hood from my 14 to 30. Is it? Yeah. Because the lens hood that comes with this is like that much bigger. There's obviously a reason for that. So yeah, this is a bit of a strange one. Uh, will I have buyer's remorse with this? Because... You've got to test it against the best nifty 50 in the world. Yeah. Or well, Nikon world at least. My most used lens is a 51.8. I use it all the time. Everyday use. So it, this has got a stiff challenge now mm. to beat that. Mm. So sharpness wise, will it be 1.2 be as sharp as the 1.8 on that lens? Well, you'd hope so after spending 1,800 of your hard-earned money on it. Then, what about the depth of field change? Will the depth of field in Boca be noticeable difference from the 1.2 to the 1.8? You'd hope so. But the mo one of the most important things I bought this for is because I do a lot of events with venues that are have no daylight, and okay. it's a struggle. Right. So the low this can take in twice as much light as the 1.8. 1 1.2 is a little bit more than one stop better than a 1.8. Right. So it lets in just over twice the amount of light. Now that's an incredible feature. Because will I be able to take photos I've never been able to before with such no, clarity? No. <laughs> but you've got you've got a Z camera with fantastic that's the thing. high ISO. That's the abilities. thing. Will the bodies just compensate for the 1.8 or the 1.2 yeah. anyway? Yeah. And then you have to think about, like we've mentioned already, the handling. So it's obviously twice the size and twice the weight. Yeah. When I'm doing events, I have my harness on me, so this will be quite an extra... Just stand like that. Like, like this, like a cowboy. Yeah. Well, so you're a cowboy. will I want to carry this all day for the extra ability it has? No. For me, what, everything you've said there, the one reason why I would be interested in a 51.2 is if it's got a certain look about it. Like I maintain the 70 to 200. There's something about it. Yeah. And I'm hoping, for your sake... <laughs> That when you when you look at the photos taken on the 51.2, there's just something about the look of those photos that is different. That's to a the really 50, 50 bread and butter lens. I think that's really an interesting point. The image rendition we're Thanks. talking about. You're welcome. <laughs> You're right. I think the image rendition might be different from that because yeah. when we've tested lenses before, they all slightly have a different mm. look about them, which isn't yeah. easy to like test against each other all these things to consider. Mm. So this will be a really interesting test. Yeah. I've been wanting to have a go on this lens since it came out. Will it be any different from the 51.8? Good light sharpness test. The 51.2 will mostly be always be on the left hand side. So it, without cropping in, they look very similar. This is a 50% crop in now. And you can see that the 1.8 is sharper. I would say the texture of the writing and the texture of the wood is sharper here. Cropping in at 100%, you can see the 1.8 is sharper here. 1.4 now, I would actually say they've leveled off quite a lot. The 100% crop, I would say they're very close. So jumping into 1.8 now on the 1.2, I would say it's actually sharper. Notice this notch of wood here, there's some imperfections. And at 50%, a lot crisper here. You can see the definition of the writing and the wood, and the texture of the wood a lot more, I would say, in this example. Which makes sense, because when you stop down a prime lens, it becomes sharper. 
So switching to 2.8 on the 51.8 now, you can see that it is a bit sharper than the 50 at 1.8. Both on 2.8 now, you can see that 51.2 lens is sharper than the 50 1.8 version on the same setting. At 100% crop, you can see that a bit more too. Switching to f4 now on the 51.8, I would say they've leveled up quite a lot there. I would say the f4 is sharper on the 4.8. Now they're both on f4 with the same settings. I would say it's leveled off a bit more now. Maybe slightly sharper. They have leveled off quite a bit here. From this example, very close indeed. Okay, so now I switch to low light. There's only an ambient light in the room and you can see they're exactly the same settings. So now I've reduced the shutter speed to one second on both of them. As you can see, the 1.8 version has to have a double the ISO, 800 compared to 400 on the 1.2. They look very similar images to me. In good light, the 1.8 is sharper than the 1.2, but because the ISO is doubled, it obviously adds to a softer image. In lower light, I would suggest that the 1.2 is sharper than the 1.8 because the lower ISO number. So this is taken in my garden at night time. So the light in the foreground here is from my window. And as you can see, they're the same settings. But because it's a 1.2 version, it's a lot more clearer. At one sixth of a second, maximum ISO. You can see a clear difference in the quality here. The 1.8 version is a lot darker, obviously, and there is a lot of colour noise as well. And this whole rabbit head you can barely see. Whereas the 1.2 version, you can see that, and there's some definition there. There is noise, but it's a lot more effective. Let's see what we can do when we edit, because of the dynamic range, we can try and see if we can match. They have leveled out without cropping in. It's not too bad. Let's crop in. There is a lot of colour noise there. So now I've changed it to 0.4 of a second, and you can see ISO has dropped to 11,400, and the 1.8 version is 20,000 ISO. The 1.8 version has cleared up a lot with the color noise, although the 1.2 is even better, of course. There's lots of definition, color tones, and depth there, and sharpness. I did some photography at a small rock gig. The ability to get such clean looking ISOs, because obviously it's half of the 1.8 can achieve. So I'm really impressed with the quality and detail you can get at such low ISOs. I mean, this is 640 ISO, so on 1.8 it would be about 1,200. But again, that's no problem for the Z6. You can easily go up to even 20,000 or even 40,000. But if you love working with cleaner ISO numbers for this kind of work, it is quite enjoyable. Of course, the focus system was better, I found, with the 1.2 because it allows more light in. Although the Z6 and Z7 Mark IIs aren't so good in low light and subject tracking, as we know. And also you remember that rock concerts, it's okay to have a bit of noise because it's a rock concert. Kind of adds to the atmosphere, maybe. With the Z6, I mean, look at this photo, it's beautiful. Really sharp in the foreground. Great composition as well, but there's no problem there. So he's lowered the shadows to get rid of the noise, but it's a beautiful photo. And this was taken at 18,000 ISO. This photo here was taken at 30,000 ISO. So now we're going to look at the background, the depth of field, the bokeh, the compression. So here's side by side. Just to pay attention to the background here, do you think it looks any different? If you look at the, this is the, actually, actually my washing line. It's a lot thicker on this side. On that side. And this is my washing basket. It has some edges there, whereas this one has. And you also can see here the this is a tree stump log. And it's quite dark in this one. On this one it's faded. So you go. So the 1.2 shot at 1.2 is on this side. And it's the same lens, but this is 1.8 on the left here this time. Let's switch it back. So the 1.2 is always on the left. And there is a difference there I can see. Is it a massive difference? No, it's not as big as I thought it would be actually. Just paying attention to the background. So 1.2, 1.8, 1.2, 1.8, 1.2, 1.8. 
you can see the 1.8 has the beginning of edges to the background, I would say. This is now comparing it with a 1.8 lens. Can you see a difference? One's at 1.2, one's at 1.8. So paying attention to the background, you can see on this over here, it's a lot more defined. The lines have edges, I would say. And again, the log here is quite a dark blur, whereas on this side, it's faded almost into nothing. But I'd actually say the 1.2 still has a blurry depth of field than the 51.8 lens. You see the log here, again, it's more darker, but it's still there on this 51.2, but not so profound. And again, the washing line. They're about the same size, but I would say the 51.8 lens has an edge. So now I'm comparing it to the 85. And with all longer focal lengths, the longer the focal length, the closer the background appears to be with the depth of field and the compression. Whereas the 50, obviously, you can still see things in the background. Is it a distraction? Would you say it's more artistic choice here? And also comparing it to my 105, 1.4, and that's completely smashed the background. I'm not paying too much attention to my face, although it has changed the shape of my face. Focal length does affect the composition of an image in the center. 51.8, look the same or better than using 1.2 using software. So does it look different from the 1.2? I think it does, even with softening the background as much as I can, the 1.2 version still has a nicer rendition in the background. That's the old unedited, edited, unedited, edited. So the edited version does look nicer. I would also say the 1.2 is naturally a bit warmer. At the beginning of the video, you said you were hoping shooting at 1.2 would be as sharp as shooting with the 1.8 version. And was it? Yes, is the answer, I think. It was a bit softer at 1.2, but this is when you yeah, cropping in so cropping far. Yeah, this cropping at 100%. How relevant is that in the real world anyway? Well, with sharpness, it's a tricky one. It's not an easy yes or no situation where it's sharp or not. It depends on the situation you're in. So in good light, the 1.2 is a tiny bit softer. Done this at 1.0. Yes. Okay. And then at 1.8, this becomes sharper yeah. in good light. At 100% crop, which yeah. nobody ever does. But in lower light situations where you need a higher ISO for the 1.8 yeah. version, this yeah. becomes sharper at 1.2. Because it's using a lower ISO number. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So what did you think about the background rendition? Yeah, I mean, the 1.2, I had a lovely, nice, creamy bokeh. Mm. Um, I don't think it was that much different to the 1.8. Yes, for you, the photographer, you get a really, you get a nice fuzzy feeling inside your tummy from that. <laughs> but is your client going to make, draw any distinction from it? Probably not. Uh, yeah, to be fair, I was disappointed that the 1.2 didn't have a significant yeah. difference from shooting at 1.8 with itself and with yeah. the older 1.8 version. Yeah. But I've kind of learned, as shooting with this, I've done four weddings with this now, because I know when to use the 1.2, and I love seeing the dial go to 1.3, 1.4, 1.6. I'm actually shooting in a different way to get the most out of the 1.2 and the 1.4. What, what different way is that then? Explain. Uh, maximizing the depth of field and the compression. So the sub relation to the subject, to the, the lens and then the background, Yeah. I would adjust things the best I can to get the most out of the 1.2. Right, a quick little test. So we've got the 50s on both cameras, same distance. Yep. 1.2 and 1.8. Shing! Shing. Shing. Okay. So can you tell the difference? Can we tell the difference? Not between... standing near, <laughs> what's, your, what's your autofocus like on it? Focusing speed, etc. Yeah, so I've seen other reviews, again, misguided. But they say the old 1.8 is faster focusing. Right. But I've been finding the 1.2 is, is faster because of the lower light situation. Hmm. So if I'm shooting at a reception in lower light, it seems to find the subject much better. Okay. Because the amount of light, obviously, in better light, you get yeah, quicker yeah, focusing. Yeah. Yeah. So in that regard, I've actually enjoyed shooting these dark receptions and stuff because it's found it snappy. Well, as good as the lens bodies allow, mm. that's a whole other subject. So in normal light, very similar? Very similar. 
Okay, and in terms of the 1.2, is there any time that you can't use it at f1.2? Yeah, so I did a wedding yesterday and it was like this really sunny. I can't shoot at 1.2 when they're in the sunlight, oh. bright sunlight, because Interesting. I shoot at eight thousandths per second, that's maxed out. Yeah. ISO 64 yeah. on the Z7 yeah. and it's overexposed. Wow. So I have to lower it to at least 1.8 yeah. to get, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've put in some comparisons there with the 85 and the 105. I mean, that has a different look, mm. right? So obviously the background compresses closer to the subjects with the longer focal lengths. And obviously it looks more dreamy and airy, but you also lose the context of where you are. That's one of the best things with a 50 is that you still got the context, but it still has that airy light look. So you've just introduced the word look. I was hoping that to prevent you getting buyer's remorse, you would think that this does have a certain look to it compared to this. Yeah. And the lines of what I say about my 70 to 200. So it's again, it's not as much as I thought it would be or yeah. was hoping, yeah. but with combination of all these little things. So like with the slightly better depth of field compression with the lower light capability and with a it's a few other things. It has a slightly warmer look and colour contrast to the 51.8. Okay. So these things combined do have a character for this lens, I think. It's not obvious, right. but maybe it shouldn't be because then I won't be able to add, use yeah, yeah, any yeah. of the lens. Yeah. Interesting things was when we, you shoot at 1.8, 1.8 times that, the background edition still looks different, even though the depth of field is the same. So okay. that means it does have a character of its own. Well, it comes down to the big question then. Yeah. Are you sending it back or is it a keeper? It's a keeper for me. <laughs> it's, it's approved. <laughs> it's got my stamp of approval. It has. But I would never pay full price for it. At the moment, maybe I'm still I'm four weeks in with it using this now. So I think. it's honeymoon period. It's given me an added fun interest. And I'm kind of pursuing, because let's face it, in all honesty, that lens is probably 80% of what this is. Mm. So in a lot of situations, you might not be able to tell the difference. But what I'm doing now is shooting in a way to maximize the 1.2 goodness. Yeah. So I'm, I've looked at my last few weddings and compared it to the ones I've done before that, I'm shooting with this a lot more at 1.2 and it has a different character now, my mm. kind of collection. Well, good. So yeah, if you enjoy using a lens, or a camera body for no particular reason other mm. than personal yeah, taste. Yeah, yeah. You're going to get your it's photography. It's going to bring out be the best in you, isn't it? Yeah. I, I accept that. Yeah. Or somewhere I want to be discreet and travel light. No way would I take this. No. So they've both got a place in my kit. So, and the price as well, if you think about it, this is four times the price, four times the weight. Is it, would I recommend it to everyone? No, I wouldn't. Are the differences enough for you to give this a stamp of approval? The differences between that and this, for me, weren't sufficient for me to be remotely interested in buying it. Can't not approve it because it's a beautiful Z mount lens. It's not for me. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But I appreciate that as you've already said, mm. for a certain use case, certain person, mm. it would be a lovely lens to have. Well we are interested in your points of view. Do you find this video interesting? Give us a like and subscribe. I'm sure everybody that's got it will love, love it. it. I mean there is a feeling that you want to justify your purchase. I'd be interested people that haven't got it do the comparisons influence you one way or the other let us know